Hey everyone, welcome to the Derek London Podcast. This video is my library YouTube studio tour. In the not too distant future, I intend to do a bookshelf tour where I'll get into, you know, what books I own, where I got them, what I've read, some TBR, what'll be unhauled, and so on and so forth. Now this video has been a long time in coming. I've received several requests on my other channel to do this. So here's the format. First, I'll talk about my bookcases, all of which I built. Then I'll take you through the decorations and lighting, and then I'll discuss my furniture, which basically consists of my chair and my desk. And then I'll show you my YouTube equipment and how filming operations usually work around here. All right, enough prolegomen, and let's get right into it. Hey peeps, let's talk about the main bookcase behind me. I built this several years ago on a shoestring budget. In fact, most everything, aside from my YouTube equipment, was accumulated on a shoestring budget. So if you want to set up a little home library or study of your own, I'll show you how you can do that with only a few hundred to a thousand bucks. This bookcase was constructed out of 1x10 pine planks and one 4x8 piece of quarter inch sanded plywood for the back, which you can get from Home Depot. I can't remember individual prices, the whole thing as I recall, stain and fasteners included, maybe cost me between 200 and 250 bucks. Super lightweight, I can lift it with one arm quite easily, when it's empty of course, and all I had was a drill and a skill saw. It's extremely utilitarian, there's nothing really fancy about it, but I, you're probably like me, I absolutely hate particle board. At one time this bookcase held every book I ever owned, and oddly, I kind of designed it around the books I had. You'll notice the bottom shelf is quite large for all of my oversized photo books and coffee table centerpieces. I was also really terrified about tipping bookcases, so I extended the base outward a couple of inches, which I was thankful I did. I think it even looks better anyway. The next four shelves were built to accommodate hardcovers and also box sets, which tend to be slightly thicker and taller, like my Sherlock Holmes book you see there. The second to last shelf was designed for oversized paperbacks, and the top one was intended for these Arcturus collections, you ever seen these before? By the way, if you're on a budget, but want to get into classic literature, this is the best way of doing it short of buying them on your e-reader. I'll go into more detail, but Indigo sells these amazing classics for $6 each, or else 3 for 10 bucks. I don't know if you're like me, but I find it very hard to justify spending lavishly on beautifully leather-bound, gilded collectors. And, as you'll see in my bookshelf tour, that's not always the most practical way of reading a classic anyway, for a number of reasons. So I'm a big fan of Indigo for making these classics available like this. That's about it for my large bookcase. It was stained with an old brown color called Provincial and glossed over with Verithane. Super simple. Moving on. Okay guys, so I actually fibbed a little bit earlier. I didn't build this second smaller bookcase. I actually bought it at a used furniture store for just over a hundred bucks. I like how simple and sturdy it is and I was lucky to find one that was just natural pine. It had never been painted or stained before. So I sanded the hell out of it, used that provincial color and verithaned it to match the big one. Something I'll say about buying bookcases versus building them is that you have a lot more control over organizing your books when you build. Having said that, the big one was just meant to be a no-frills workhorse. While there's a lot of dead space in this smaller one, it definitely looks a lot nicer than the tall bookcase. Okay, now I want to move on to the bookcase that is by far the quirkiest, and yet, in some odd way, I'm the most proud of it. I got the idea for this one on Pinterest of all places. And yeah, yeah, ladies, I know what you're thinking. If your guy likes Pinterest, he's probably Pinterested in men. <laughs> But whatever, I thought this was a brilliant idea, okay? So take your judgment elsewhere. Anyway, these little crates are super cheap. They're like $11.99 or $12.99 at Canadian Tire. I bought 10 of them. So with the stain, which you guessed it, is again provincial, this cost maybe $150 plus tax. I just love this thing. It's much more sturdy than it looks. It's only held together by a few screws per compartment, so it's really easy to take apart. And there you go, if you have to move, you got your crates for your books. So awesome. You'll notice the Pinterest version is rectangular, but I wanted this one to look a little more, I don't know, architectural, I guess. So I stacked and offset them somewhat randomly. And what's great is I can keep adding to it. I like how asymmetrical it is. And you have all these little cubbies you can tuck oddly shaped books in. I don't know, tell me in the comments below if you like this idea. Now the main drawback of this bookcase I realize is it's quite busy looking, right? 
It's not a refined piece of furniture, but if you're looking for cheap and cozy, this might be a winner for you. It fits into this library because I don't have really expensive bookcases in here. So those are my bookshelves, guys. Now let's move on to the decor. Starting with the black and red background, I bought these from Walmart of all places for I think eight bucks each or something like that. I'd never put them up on a window. They're meant to be just decorative pocket rod side panels. Instead, I got these subtle black pins and just poked them into the wall. No screws, no measuring, no fuss, no muss. Something I've learned a lot about having a YouTube channel and lighting is that you either want beautiful natural light or else you need to black everything out and control your light by adding to it from almost pitch black darkness. Think of it as starting with a fresh canvas. I do love the natural cheerful light thing, but it was always a big annoyance to me getting glare and shifting light if a cloud passed by your window and annoyances like that. So I did the latter option and started from a dark space and slowly lit the studio with well-placed lighting. I was also looking to brand my YouTube channel a little better, so I decided black, red, and gold would be my channel theme. That's why I went with these side panels. You'll notice they don't even come up to the ceiling all the way, so you might not want to do this to your own place. It really only works for a YouTube studio. Let's talk about knickknacks and accents for a second. This is something you'll accumulate over time, and I would actually recommend you do it that way. People are going to give you gifts, you're going to find stuff on sale, your taste will change. So gradually just add to it. Don't buy a bunch of bookends and pottery. You'll grow tired of it. Besides, it lacks sentimentality and this is all about being a, a sanctuary to you, right? Well, that's my opinion anyway. Tell me in the comments if you think I'm wrong. I have some wonderfully generous people in my life. Most of these accents you see are birthday and Christmas gifts. My fiance, for example, bought me this beautiful book pedestal. This is very special to me. I often display books that I'm reviewing on it and the only downfall is I don't like how this mic mount is blocking it at the moment because it's such a centerpiece. So I'm trying to find a solution for that. Stop right there, hold up. All right, peeps, so I'm just gonna interrupt for a second right here. I wanna show you something. You see that ratio? Look at that, 86%. 86 freaking percent of you watching are not subscribed. <laughs> Why don't you like me? What are you even doing anyways? So the next time we see this little animation, what are we gonna do? Damn straight. Okay, I hate to have to set you straight like that, but it's for your own good. I don't wanna have this conversation again, you understand? Anyways, as I was saying. This was a print I bought from a catalog at my parents' home decor store years and years ago, long before my YouTube journey started. It's kind of beaten up a bit and been through a few moves, but I still really like it and it fits in perfectly with the color palette. I wasn't decorating around it, it just happened to work out. I love this classical guitar. I bought this about a decade ago, I'd say. I might move this out of my office, so all that shows up in the shot is the headstock, so I might put something else in this corner in due time. All right, peeps, I wanna say something about lighting for a moment. I've always really loved indirect lighting. It highlights a lot of features in a room and adds dimension and ambiance. We also have to remember this is a YouTube studio though, so unless you intend to do an open house, entertain or something like that, you have to improvise. I just took this reading lamp, which emits very soft yellow light and focused it on the art. My desk is also hiding all of this printer mess, but it never shows up in the shot. So I highly endorse indirect lighting. It's awesome for YouTube videos. Okay, so I wanna show you some more accents here. This is a cigar lighter my good friend bought for me. I've read some really interesting books on the Civil War, so it fits into that historical reading interest a lot. Very thoughtful gift. He also got me this picture frame I really love. That's me and my fiance. This one always puts a big smile on my face. My lovely stepdaughter bought this for me. <laughs> she knows me so well. Can you guess who this is? It's Niles Crane from that TV series, Frasier, which is one of my favorite shows. And Niles Crane is my favorite character. David Hyde Pierce is born for live theater, I think. Such a classical actor. So this means a lot to me. She also got me this little guy, which I love too. This is not a real tobacco pipe. It's a vape pipe that never really worked that well. I went through a super brief vaping phase, but I got tired of smelling like strawberry shortcake and donuts. So now I smoke cigars like God intended. Uh, I guess I should add the perfunctory, don't smoke kids, it'll kill ya. There, are you happy, YouTube? God, some reading glasses, no real story behind that. 
My fiance bought me this sand timer. I'm a big fan of classic sand timers. I think they're a great office accent. Now I wanna take a minute for Jay Leno here. I actually met Jay Leno a little over a decade ago at his show in Burbank. This was that brief stint after he took the show away from Conan. You remember that whole saga? If you've never been to a live studio audience before, guys, you really have to go. Such a neat experience. I went with my mom. We had such a great time. It's generally free. You book a few months in advance and you just wait all day to get in. That's all there is to it, really. Well, I was really fortunate to have met someone in the audience who had been to these live shows before. And she said, just before Jay announces that he's going to go slip into one of his cheesy ill-fitting suits and throw on a pound of talcum, he'll ask if anyone has any questions. And she said, you have to be really aggressive and get his attention because he'll take the first ambitious fan and you'll get to meet him and take a picture with him. Sure enough, right after the warm up, that's exactly what happened. So I jolted out of my seat and got his attention. I think I kind of scared Jay actually because I was so over eager. I have the Polaroid somewhere, but I have to look for it. Anyway, that's my Jay Leno story. I bought this in the gift shop right after the show, so it means a lot to me. But for what it's worth, I like all of those late night guys with the exception of Jimmy Fallon. And Jay Leno is a nice dude. Everyone always says that about him. He's one of the few celebrities to wave back at tourists in LA, apparently. He's not my favorite late night talk show host. My favorite has always been David Letterman. He's got a bit more grit to him. Still, that's a really special experience I shared with my mom in LA. So Jay always gets good real estate in my library. This is a wine box my good buddy Mickey has bought for me. One of these days I'm gonna stain it and use it to display books whenever I find a time to get around to it, that is. This also has a lot of sentimental value to me. My dad got this shot glass in Mexico, and I really love how artistic it is. I never drink from it because I'm scared to wreck it. This globe is probably my favorite piece in the library. My lovely fiance bought it for my birthday. Does she know my tastes or what? Something you should know is a library is incomplete without a globe, but most importantly, a bar. What makes this perfect is it doubles for both. I have to buy some decorative wine glasses. I'm really hard on wine glasses though, so that's why it's empty. Okay, let's talk about the Titanic. I got this off Amazon. You'll notice in all my old content that there was a, a TV here that never got any use, so I gave it away and replaced it with this Titanic model because, I don't know, I think it's a very office-y thing to have. I've also never done any of these puzzles as a kid, so I suppose I was trying to recapture my childhood. I posted a time-lapse video of me assembling this, but I'm still in the process of transitioning my channel from the other one, so maybe you'll see it in due course. Speaking of budgets, guys, I got this beautiful lamp from Use Victoria, which is basically like Craigslist out here. The Marriott Hotel was clearing out a whole bunch of furniture, and this was in absolutely perfect shape. I think I paid 20 bucks for it, and the light is graduated, so I always dim it down to the lowest setting for YouTube videos. These lights on the bookcases are a great soft yellow accent, and they were only like $8 each at Walmart. For those of you decorating a home study, take advantage of Walmart for stuff like that. You don't need to spend a whole bunch of money. In fact, sometimes the cheaper solutions are best. I explain why in a moment when I discuss my YouTube equipment. I love these streamer lights too, but they're a bit dimmer than I realized, so I shouldn't have intertwined them around all these books. I was going more for indirect lighting, but that was a bit of a fail. I'll get around to redoing it at some point, I'm sure. Okay, now let's talk about YouTube equipment. This is an old desk from Costco I got second hand. It's good from afar, but far from good. I know it looks like a beautiful $10,000 executive desk, but it's pretty beat up when you get close on it. So I touched up the scratches and no one's really the wiser for it when the video is rolling. I frequently get complimented on this desk actually. I bought this office chair about a year and a half ago from Staples, I think. And I'm really happy with it actually, although I have a hell of a time keeping my cats off of it. So that's why it's starting to share some wear and tear. This globe was also gifted to me by my lovely stepdaughter and I absolutely love it. She's got pretty good taste for a 13 year old, doesn't she? When I started my other YouTube channel about two and a half years ago, all I had was the iPad and this old desktop, which was way too slow to work on. I used to edit everything on the tablet. And besides that, I had my iPhone camera. That's it. So I've accumulated a lot of equipment in the past couple years. These desk mounted mic stands were 25 bucks on Amazon, I think. My mic was around $350 and I'm super pleased with the audio quality. Speaking about lighting again, I have professional lights that I spent a bunch of money on and I don't even use them. 
they're too much for this little space. So I bought these little $10 lamps from Walmart. They're soft white and perfect for casting subtle shadows. My pupils don't have white discs around them and I don't go blind. I'm really pleased with all the lighting I got from Walmart. Price doesn't even come into it for me. As I say, I did spend big money on, big, on good lights, but I wasn't impressed. For you YouTubers starting out, don't be afraid to try some cheap solutions every now and again. Of course, when it comes to your camera, mic, and computer, yeah, don't cheap out on that sort of thing. Those are important. But for a small time filming operation or making a home study or library, lighting and decor can be obtained really inexpensively. This is the most recent M1 MacBook Pro. I just got it this year for 1800 bucks, and it's been worth every penny. I can't believe the workload you can put on this thing. This iPad Pro is a bit older now. I got it secondhand for 300 bucks, and it works great for quick edits and thumbnails. My old iPad has been relegated as a teleprompter, and I use an iPhone 12 for all my video. For this low light application, it does a phenomenal job. I'm stupid impressed with Apple's camera ability. Yeah, yeah, for you Android users, I know I'm in a cult. But I just like how everything works together without me having to be a computer genius, okay? This is a big fight in our household, guys. I mean, we're talking, this is like religion and politics level stuff around here. I'm a Mac guy. My fiance and stepdaughter, on the other hand, are into garbage. I mean, Androids and PC, sorry. Oh, and by the way, while I'm pissing off half of my audience, just for good measure, because who can it hurt? Trump sucks too. There we go. Now that I've alienated everyone, tell me in the comments below what you think of everything. Let me know if you have any questions or ideas on what might improve this space. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for stopping by. Hey everyone, I hope you liked this video. We put up some incredibly transformative content on this channel. If you want more like the one you just watched, click the suggested video on this screen. Make sure you subscribe, and to connect with me on my other platforms, my handles are linked below in the description, all right? Take care, peeps. Till next time.